Welcome in, Campo and Joe, on the air, Facebook Live, or if you catch up with us a little bit later on one of our 1010XL social channels, welcome in. Appreciate you listening. Joe C. from XL Primetime, noon to three weekdays, Monday through Friday, and our head coach, Dave Campo, as we come off a Jaguar win over his Dallas, I, I'm not even going to say his Dallas Cowboys. Let's set this up. But he's the former head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. We've got so much to get into from this game. So let's do it. And let's say thank you to Beaver Chevrolet with our Wow You Thoughts on this game, courtesy of Beaver Chevrolet. They want to wow you every single day right there on the lot on Phillips Highway or online at beaverchevrolet.com. So before we get in the game, Let's just go through the emotions of one Dave Campo and his family when, you know, you coached in Jacksonville. You coached here, but you were a former head coach there and a lot of years there. You were kind of torn. You know, to be honest with you, I really wasn't torn Mm -hmm. because, you know, I have a lot of loyalty for the Cowboy Mm -hmm. organization. Sure. Sure. Uh, You know, being there 18 years and head coach for three uh, and, and, you know, I want them to do well. I'd love to see them being in a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But I'm a Jaguar fan now, That's right. and and because I work with you guys at mm-hmm. the station, and and you know as much we talk about the Jaguars, yeah, you know they're my team now, and uh, I wanted them to win, yeah, and they did, yeah, yeah. So a- I, emotionally, it was exciting for me. Yeah, you were on the good side of it. Look, I've been trying to say bad things about Dallas ever since, okay? And look, they loaded up. They came in. I I was joking on the show yesterday. I'm like, "Thank you for all the money that you spent in our town. Now get back to Dallas." And more than anything else, I think coach, it was just the euphoria of this football team coming from 17 points down and probably doing something that a lot of people did not think possible. So just on the whole, before we uh, you know, how big was that? Oh, it's huge. For the city, for the fans, Mm -hmm. for the team, Mm -hmm. for uh, the process that Doug Peterson is talking about, Mm -hmm. that if you stay the course, good things are going to happen. And uh, regardless of what they do in the next three, which we hope they win all three of them, and that would be fantastic. Uh, But if they don't, it bodes well for next year, the way the quarterback has come on, Mm -hmm. uh, the way the team is kind of molded together. They've got that competitive spirit and Mm -hmm. never give up attitude. And we're going to play to the end till it's zero, zero, zero on the scoreboard, uh, you know, Mm time-wise. So it was a huge win because that just validates every time they win one, it validates exactly what Doug Peterson is teaching them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many things to hit on. And we're going to try and hit on as many of them as we can, but I almost come into the podcast just as excited as I left the game because there were so many things that happened. So let's just maybe just try and go in chronological order. Defensively, Jacksonville struggled to begin with. Dak just went down the field, really found open guys, made plays. They end up going up 21 to seven in this ball game. So just kind of capsulize the first half of this game, you know, from what, from what Jacksonville wasn't doing defensively to allow that to happen. Well, first of all, they have a good offensive football mm-hmm. team. They have a, an offensive line that's that's pretty good. Yeah. They've got two running backs, which really puts the pressure on you because mm-hmm. both of those guys, and especially Pollard, mm-hmm. can hit can hit a home mm-hmm. run on you and they can keep the chains moving. What they did in the first half is that we really had a lot of problems handling the run game right. because they came up with probably three or four third down and ones. Mm-hmm. And you're not going to win a lot of third down and ones. If you're not winning first or second down right. on defense, uh, you know, you're going to have a hard time. So the pressure was on there. Plus Dak was 15 for 16. They got a, a, a great situation where they ended up getting Pollard on our outside linebacker on a wheel route. Mm-hmm. So that was a touchdown. And so, you know, uh, to be honest with you, the, it was a rough start. They they only rushed four. They were a little concerned with having to go too much man coverage, mm-hmm. you know, w- with putting too much pressure on. So they didn't get that much pressure. So it started out poorly. And to be honest with you, that's a little bit of an Achilles heel for us because right. you can't expect, although we've done it probably three times this year, you can't expect to get behind that much in the first half. And no. come back all the time. No. Now, we do have a quarterback that can do it. That's the plus. Yeah, they were down 21-7 early. They were down as much as 17 points in this game. They were one of three teams that were able to come back 
from 17 down. Cincy against Tampa Bay, Minnesota came from 33 down to win that one. So this was a a historic weekend because there had never been three teams in one weekend come from 17 or more down. And, and, you know, when we look at this team and, and I just feel like the growth is, is we shouldn't dismiss what has happened here in a short amount of time. Baby steps forever. This team couldn't get out of their own way. They'd win one and lose two. They'd win one and lose 10. You know, you can go on and on and on. And for this football team to be playing relevant football in the month of December, Doug Peterson, man, Trevor Lawrence, I, 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 I mean, those are at least the two at the top that, that, that got us here. Well, and and I look at it also that the assistant coaches, in mm-hmm. my mind, are doing a great job yeah. because, you know, you can see the improvement in, in, in a lot of different areas. Uh, it, it, there's been a number of times, one of the reasons we've been able to come back, we just kind of dinged the defense here a little bit in the first half. Right. In the second half, in a lot of these ball games, the defense has come on. You know, they had two stops. They had two turnovers Mm -hmm. and, you know, in the second half Mm -hmm. and uh, critical situations. And they started doing some things with putting a little bit more pressure on. They felt a little bit more comfortable with it. Uh, They started doubling number 88 rather than going single on them with with uh, with uh, Tyson Campbell. No, not uh, Campbell. It was was Herndon Herndon. on the other side. You know, they had Herndon on him Mm -hmm. quite a bit. Yeah. uh, And he was working them over in the first half. But. They've been able to make adjustments. That's the coaching staff. They're mm-hmm. looking at it. They're saying, "Hey, they're hurting us with this. We've got to, we've got to do something else." They started running some zone pressures, mm-hmm. you know, some things defensively. So the combination of the coaches and what they're doing and setting up game plans uh, is phenomenal, and and that's what's allowing them to get back into those ball games. Yeah, and let's point out. I mean, we've been hard on Mike Caldwell, the defensive coordinator, uh, and, and guys also on the football team that have been kind of lost. I think you and I were collectively worried about what Dalton Schultz and that tight end game could do to Jacksonville, and they definitely had their success. But you saw linebackers step up, make more plays, and I think Coach uh, Caldwell was able to create, in the second half like you're talking about, create a little more pressure on Dak. Yeah, they ran. Uh, they actually did what we've kind of been talking about mm-hmm. is is maybe get number 33 a little bit more involved yeah. in Rushing the Just passer. Going after the passer. You know, they ran some weak side zone pressures, bringing the nickel off the edge and right. then uh, bringing the linebacker on that side, which mm-hmm. was which was Lloyd, mm-hmm. you know, who can who can rush. Yeah. So they put the pressure on there. They dropped their nose guard out a couple of times on the weak side. One of them, they knocked down the, mm-hmm. the throat of the tight end. Mm-hmm. Uh, Campbell knocked down the throat of the tight end. And uh, the other one, they got a sack on. Mm-hmm. And then they started doing a little bit more uh, – uh, twists, games. And those are uh, t- just T-E and E-T. Explain yeah. what those are. Well, it's it's where you're rushing the inside guy up the field hard mm-hmm. and then bringing the end underneath mm-hmm. or rushing the end underneath and scraping the inside tackle around. Mm-hmm. They started doing a little bit more than that of that that puts a little bit more pressure on. They right. push, pressured the guards with pressure, and uh, it paid dividends. Yeah, and you saw Josh Allen, Dewan Smoot, Roy Robertson Harris. We can go on and on. Foley Fadakasi made a play early before he got dinged up. So there were some guys along the defensive front that, I don't know, maybe we haven't either heard from them in a while or said their name enough. Josh Allen played pretty good. He sure did, and and uh, it, it, not only against the pass, against mm-hmm. the run as well. Yeah. You know, I think uh, – this has been two or three ball games where they've really simplified things, mm-hmm. and and to me, you know, they're really running by packages, very few packages now, mm-hmm. which I think helps them in the long run because if they're getting hurt in a certain thing, if you're not doing a lot of things, right. you know how to adjust to it, mm-hmm. and that's really where they're they're at right now. They'd say, okay, they're hurting us with this. What we have to do, we know what to do. Right. When you're running a lot of different zone pressures mm-hmm. and different uh, fronts and all that stuff, it's a little harder to adjust because right. you don't know exactly what's hurting you. Yeah. And you might be more worried about getting guys lined up instead of just yeah, going and, and making plays. And, and to be honest with you, that's one thing. To this point, they're still having to talk to Lloyd a little bit. Mm-hmm. You watch him talking to him during the course of the ball game. Right. He was better. 
Uh He's getting better, Uh and hopefully that simplification is going to make it easier for him to play as well. There there are so many new things that are happening on this football team from a brand new defensive coordinator, which he had never been at that level before. Free agents coming from here, there, and everywhere. Rookies being thrown into the fire. There was no Trayvon Walker in this game because of a high ankle sprain. So that was one of their one more of their guys that were down. Uh, Chad Muma was hurt. He played a little bit, but not a lot. Devin Lloyd played the lion's share of the, of the, the linebacker snaps. So before we get to, to Trevor and, and some of the performances on the offensive side, Rayshon Jenkins, spend a minute on this guy because he had the game winner. He had the walk-off winner, which was just a great play. And people still probably look at the play and go, how did he do that? It was I call it the Duval version of the immaculate reception because he made a play. He made a play. Yeah, and, and had a great game. Had 18 tackles. Yeah. Uh, Have nine you ever had solos. a guy like that? No. Uh, you know, Darren Woodson, who we had mm-hmm. with the Cowboys that we mm-hmm. had on mm-hmm. the primetime last week, mm-hmm. uh, or, yeah, mm-hmm. last yeah. week. Uh, Darren, you know, has the most tackles in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. Mm-hmm. And that's beating Bob Lilly and some that's, that's, Hall of Famers rare, you know, rare. in that situation. He was one that would do a lot of things, you know, because he was playing two positions. He's mm-hmm. playing nickel on third down. He was playing. He's on all special teams. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he's playing safety. Mm-hmm. He'd had some games where, you know, he had an interception and nine or ten tackles mm-hmm. in the game because he was a ball hawk. Yeah. Well, to have 18 tackles and two interceptions, yeah. one for a six pick, uh, pick six and a and a win. Yeah, uh, that might be one of the best defensive games I've ever been around. And the one thing you know about the guy, mm-hmm. he plays hard and yeah. he'll hit you. Yeah, and he's around the ball, and that's how you get turnovers is being around the ball. Yeah, he's got heart and he can hit you, and yeah. that's a good combination. Oh, yeah. And you know, just as far as history goes, and we can count ourselves among history and anybody else who was watching it or in the stadium, he's the only player in NFL history to record at least eighteen tackles and two interceptions wow. in a game. Okay, we'll see yeah. you. you yeah. Your statistics, man. Yeah. You got me on that one. I didn't know that. <laughs> and then I will say that's the best defensive performance yeah. I've ever been around in my history. Because you you put a little clip shot together of all the plays he made, and 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 you're, there's you're not exaggerating when you say that he plays with heart and he plays with with, right. with passion. He can hit you, and he's tough. You know, yeah. he's tough. He's competitive, and the energy level mm-hmm. is what brings everybody together, Mm -hmm. you know, and you need some guys like that on the ball club for sure. And and especially matching what Dallas had talent-wise because they could come at you, as you mentioned, the two-headed monster coming out of the backfield, tight end game, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, on and on and on. Gallup was held down. He really was. All right, so let's get to the other side of the ball and let's talk about what, again, seems to be not record-setting or historic – it might fall under the category of beginning to etch his own history for this football team is what Trevor Lawrence is doing. Yeah, you know, I, he's just getting better and better every game. And, you know, the one interception he threw, uh, it was actually a bust in the Cowboys' secondary, and there mm-hmm. was somebody where they're not supposed to be, and he happened to not know that he was going to be there because he was supposed to be somewhere else mm-hmm. uh, that he saw on film right through the seam route, and the guy was just standing in there. So... That was one of them, and the fumble, he was trying to make a play. Yeah, I don't was. blame him for that because at that particular time, they had to get into field goal range. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't about to slide. No. You know, he was going to try to make a play, and it just happened that the guy got the helmet on the ball. Yeah. And But you look at what he's done the last five games, six games. Yeah. He's one of the top five quarterbacks in the country during the, in the league during that six game span. Yeah. We, and so, you know, uh that bodes well for the future. You know, I've said it a number of times now over the last couple of day, weeks. Mm-hmm. You're looking at a franchise quarterback evolving right in front of your eyes. Yeah. There's no question about it. He's a different cat right now. Yeah, and as much as we have seen just in terms of highlights performance, Mark Brunell getting this team to a couple of AFC Championship games, uh, Blake Bortles able to get him to to one in 2017. You know, this guy seems to be uh, more and capable of more than all the other guys combined. So here are the numbers, Coach, to back you up. Last six games, a 111.2 passer rating, 70.4 completion percentage. Now look, the knock on him, he was below 60% quite a bit last year. 14 touchdowns, just one pick, which you were just talking about. And the other thing is, he was 
a 12 touchdown 17 pick guy last year. He has flipped that card, coach. Right now, before the season's over, he now has 36 touchdowns in his career and 24 picks. Yeah. It's, it's, the progress is, is evident. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt the guy is moving better in the pocket. He's, uh, uh, finding his receivers, he's finding throws, which he didn't do early. Uh, he's, you know, allowing, uh, knows how to escape. Mm-hmm. He's escaping. He can throw on the run. The, the, the play that basically won the game for us was his throw to, to get into field goal range on the last drive, he scrambled out of the pocket. Yeah. And he, Darted one. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, I mean, I don't know how you say it any other way. He he yeah. ripped that one in there, and I don't think a lot of quarterbacks moving to their left could have made that throw. All right, you're you you come from defensive uh, coordinator uh, DNA. You are that's who you are. What have you seen from him? You're trying to defend him, unless you know. I, I told you earlier, you could go to a September or October game where he was forcing the football. He might have been. He might have had happy feet. He might have panicked a little bit. Right now, he's steady in the pocket. He's making quicker decisions. He's moving up. He's moving side to side. How hard is he becoming to defend? Well, he's very difficult. And I'll tell you what, we've only he's just touched the iceberg yeah. with his ability to run. Mm-hmm. When he when he really oh, starts yeah. to you know be comfortable mm-hmm. in in his in his uh, uniform, mm-hmm. he's going to run more. Yeah. And that really puts the pressure on a, on right. a, on a on a team when they can do that. He's sneaky, athletic. Oh now. my gosh, yes. You know, uh, you know, he came within a gnat's eyelash of being able to spin on the one he fumbled mm-hmm. and go another ten yards. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, that's he's sneaky. Yeah. It, so that's going to be better mm-hmm. as he goes. That puts the pressure on the defense alone. Right. But the only way I would try to defend him right now is I would try to make him throw the long ball. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would I would load up with my guys if I've got the guys. Mm-hmm. You got to have the guys out there. Right. I'd load up on on being aggressive on the short routes and and those kind of things. That's mm-hmm. the only thing that we haven't seen. We've seen him be able to get out on the perimeter. We've seen him be able to hit the double moves, which is a credit to our offensive line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the boot crossing routes mm-hmm. that we he he's accuracy is is getting there now. Yeah. Uh, but we haven't seen him just throw the post, throw mm-hmm. the you know the, the pure deep ball yet. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I would try to crowd him. That's the only thing I would say you can do at this point because he's dangerous. Yeah. So let's just keep rolling through this offense because you mentioned the receivers and Zay Jones had himself a game. He had multiple touchdowns. He has been extremely effective three of the last four games. When you take a look at a half dozen catches for 103 yards and a, and and he only caught six balls, three of them were in the end zone. Or he ran him into the end zone. Right. Uh, how big is it to have not only the the three headed monster at the wide receiver spot, but but Evan Ingram as well? Yeah, I I think that uh, you know it's evident that the quarterback and the receivers are helping each other. Oh yeah. You know, there's no question that and the and the approach, mm-hmm. the the game plan of mm-hmm. you know getting guys into position to make some plays. He's understanding those guys better, but you know Zay Jones, that's who he is. Yeah. You know, it, he's become I, a playmaker. I, 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 I uh, people probably thought I was making excuses in the Detroit game when he had the drops. Mm-hmm. When I said that he had a chest injury and that might have, you know, I didn't mm-hmm. say that's the reason, but I right. said that might be a reason for him dropping some of those crossing routes mm-hmm. because, you know, you're coming into a lot of ammunition in there. Oh, yeah. You know, and if you've been hurt in your torso, your right. body. Yeah. That could have little, been a little bit psychological in that mm-hmm. situation, but he's been a, a, a one of those uh, position guys that don't make everything. They're mm-hmm. they're they're able to make plays all the time. Yeah. He's been that way before he came here. Yeah. He's Consistent. a guy. Yeah, he's a guy that'll go into traffic, and he's also a guy that can stretch the field. Yes. And, and Christian Kirk regarded as the fast guy, but Zade's got some up in him that you know he can get up and get going. Uh, as evidenced by that big play down the field, uh, which was, you know, massive, massive. All right, so you mentioned the line, because we got to get to the New York Jets, at least a couple of things to think about. How scary is it now that Cam Robinson's going to be gone for the rest of the year? They're going to put Walker Little in there, who they feel like they feel pretty good about. 
Uh, I shouldn't use the word scared. How concerned should they be? Well, I think there's a concern. I mean, you know, the guys only had 5% of the snaps this year, and Mm -hmm. this is game number what? uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in 14 14, games. 14. uh, You know, uh, that's a concern. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you know, I think that the Jets have some rushers, Mm -hmm. especially if Quinnen. uh, Quinnen Williams is a man. Williams plays. You know, uh, and I don't know if he will. I'm hoping he's sitting right next to White, yeah. the quarterback <laughs> on the bench. But, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a concern there. He's an athlete. Right. He's smart. So, you know, uh, and, and I think he, I think he's pretty physical. So, you know, it's you're losing a veteran that you paid a lot of money to, mm-hmm. and, and you're going with a young guy that hasn't had a lot of reps. Hopefully he can hold his own. It's on the... It's on the backside. That's an issue as well to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. So he's going to have a big part in this game, and hopefully he, he can perform. So for what it's worth, and again, this is we're doing our Campo and Joe podcast early in the week, but the game's Thursday night. Quentin Williams was limited in practice, so we'll find out whether or not he's going to be able to go. We know that Mike White's not going to be able to go. Right. And let's at least stay here right now since you brought up Mike White. Let's bring up Zach Wilson. Uh, Zach Wilson – they need to get after him. They need to make him feel like the clock is ticking faster than it really is and force him into some decisions. When he needed to make throws down the field against uh, the Detroit Lions the other day, he made some big completions. Yeah. They need to make sure they get to him and, and harass him. Yeah, I I coached against uh, Zach when he was at BYU, mm-hmm. you know, when mm-hmm. I was at USC. Right. And uh, the one thing about him, if he has time, you know, there's a reason he went number two. In the draft, mm-hmm. you know, it's good now, not all guys, right. you know, live up to where they're picked necessarily. But right. he is a number one pick right. by what he did in college. Mm-hmm. And and the one thing he did in college is when he had time, right. he could complete the ball. He's not tremendously uh, accurate with any kind of pressure. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's hurt him. I think his completion percentage is like 55 percent or something. Right. So he's not. Clean, mm-hmm. okay, and hopefully he, you know, he's had some turnovers, and that's an issue that we need to keep going because our defense hasn't been great, but they've been opportunistic. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, there is a little bit of concern there. If we can put some pressure on them, uh, I think we're starting to get a feel for when to zone pressure and do some of those things. We've got to do that in the ball game. All right, that brings me to one of my last points uh, because we do need to get at least a feel from you as far as what you think might be the key, especially in cold weather. But the Jaguars have 11 takeaways in their last five games. You say, hell yeah, that's pretty good. But they're still giving up 27 or more points in four of the five games. Right. That is a major concern. Right. Now, the Jets aren't a score and score often team, but they better make sure that they get after him and button him up. Yeah. Yeah, there's no question. I mean, you know, this this defense is is an average defense at best. At best. I mean, you know, I'll be honest. We got to be honest on yeah, this now. Yeah. They have been opportunistic, mm-hmm. which they have to be. Right. And some of that is the fact that you, it, it goes back to Doug Peterson and mm-hmm. Mike Caldwell. These guys are playing hard. Yeah. You know, and and I know uh, Leon doesn't like playing hard. He should always be playing hard, right. but. They don't always play hard. No, no, you know? it's true. And, it's true. And, and, and there's a difference between really turning it up mm-hmm. in a playoff situation right. as compared to just the regular season. Yeah. Well, every game's a playoff situation now. So our defense has given up points, but our offense has been able to score. And when mm-hmm. you start talking about the keys to winning this football game, yeah. it's going to be our offense mm-hmm. because our, our defense is going to play better against the Jets, and they played against some of the teams that they played against. Yeah. yeah. But the offense is – their defense is good. Yes, they are. And how our defense, if they play the way they've been playing, mm-hmm. will be in, in good shape in yeah. this ball game. Because think about what has happened since Detroit. This team, Duval, scored 14. They went up to Detroit, and the Lions scored 40. They have flipped the script to where they have beaten Tennessee – ended a, a basically a decade-long losing streak up in Nashville by scoring 36 points, and they just came back and put 40 on the Dallas Cowboys. So that's 76 points from a team that only scored 14 three weeks ago. So they need to keep that going right. to have a chance. Now give me Doug Peterson 
in big ball games because it does seem like he's starting to a his plan is working and he's been in big ball games whereas this team hasn't necessarily been in big ball games. Yeah, and and you know he's won on Thursday night. Uh, he's six and zero, I believe, on mm-hmm. Thursday night wherever he's been w- mm-hmm. with Philadelphia, obviously. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a knack to that. You 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 have to know how to prepare your guys and how to talk to your guys. Mm-hmm. And the first thing he said when he got in the locker room was, "Guys, that's a great win. The twelve hour rule instead yeah. of twenty four hour rule, yeah. and take care of yourself tonight because right. we're only three games days away right. from." You know, getting ready to play a ball game the yeah. fourth day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, you've got to take care of yourself. He knows how to set the practice up, how much uh, hitting to do, you know, and, and those kind of things. Mm-hmm. So that's what he's got to do. And that's, you know, a, a very important. And he's done it. Mm-hmm. He's done it. He knows how to do it. All right. So they went up to Philadelphia, played in sloppy weather, turned the ball over a bunch. Yep. So what would you say would be a key Thursday night to make sure – Control the ball, that you know, take game. care of the ball, because, yeah. you know, you're going to be going to some rain up there and some yeah. cold. It's yeah. not going to be extremely cold, I don't think. Although by the time of the ball game, mm-hmm. it'll be yeah, in, the, in the probably the low 40s. Yeah, might even be sub-freezing by yeah. that time. Well, maybe. I don't know exactly what the weather report is, but mm-hmm. I know it's supposed to rain. Mm-hmm. And the high is like 53 or something. So okay. it's going to be down there right. when they play the ball game. And so, you know, taking care of the football uh They've already been through one of those, so you know that will be brought up for sure of protecting the ball, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, that's going to be that's going to be critical for sure. We, we've got to win the turnover battle. Yeah, yeah. there's no no doubt in my mind because they're going to be juiced up for this game yeah. as well. Yeah, they've got a, they've got a game better record right now, but that can change. Right. Thursday night. Listen, right. I'm fired up. He's yes. fired up. We can't wait. Uh, so we say thanks again to Beaver Chevrolet. Don't. Forget about them. They bring you Campo and Joe, the why your thoughts from Coach. Look for them online at beaverchevrolet.com and on Phillips Highway. Uh, you can definitely check out the dealership. Coach, I, I'm ready to go. We're talking about games in December that matter. You're fired up, right? Listen, listen. Uh, if I've just won three out of four and beaten three contenders mm-hmm. of the four of them, yeah. I'm looking forward to this thing, and I'm glad we're playing on Thursday after a win. Because that puts the twelve hour rule into effect, and let's go, let's right. go, we let's let's make a push and a run. Yeah, exactly. Fired up, ready to go. Campo and Joe, thanks for tuning in and hanging out with us.